All right, so what's going on, y'all? Now we have to determine the axial stress in each of the bar elements shown. In this case, we're just doing part A for now. Um, they give us E, A, and L, and they also give us the displacement vector, U1, V1, U2, and V2, so let's go. All right, so first step in this problem is figuring out what equation to use, right? So the normal stress, right? They're asking, they're asking for the axial stress, which is the normal or axial stress with respect with respect grams you'll put two with respect to the global coordinates i'm gonna write it down just so you know what i'm talking about coordinates this is the formula right here and again there's a lot of theory to these um formulas the way they derive them but it's a c minus matrix that's what they call it so i'm gonna go ahead and call it the same thing times your displacement vector so they give us a displacement vector, right? U1, V1, U2, and V2. And that uh, matrix right here, the C minus, um, that is, let me write it down, my bad, it's a little confusing to write, but it's pretty much just E over L, not area because you're finding stress, right? Um, so it's per unit area. And that is just negative cosine, negative sine, cosine, and sine. Of your angle obviously right so in this case uh cosine and sine of the angle is going to be uh i'm gonna write it down right here it's going to be radical two over two and same thing for sine it's going to be radical two over two um in this case they're the same right but uh it's pretty straightforward um nothing's too crazy about this problem um this is the formula we use to determine axial stress in each in a bar element so uh, let's go ahead and start plugging it in uh, step two um, we got sigma is equal to e over l which is let me write it out 30 times 10 to the 6 right they give it to us up here that's in pound per inch squared divided by 60 inches so that means this unit right here is going to be pound per inch cubed right it's a psi divided by uh inch again so it's pound per inch cubed um get the matrix going that's going to be negative cosine which is negative radical two over two negative sine which is negative radical two over two uh positive cosine and positive sine and again it's with respect to the x-axis okay that's the angle you always use and cool that is the matrix um this one is unitless there's no units right it's just a cosine angle there's no units for that kind of stuff and then your displacement vector is gonna be u1 v1 again make sure you don't you know how to write it out it's u1 v1 then u2 v2 not u1 u2 v1 v2 just u1 v1 usually do it by notes right first note second note third note etc so it's 0 0.02 0 0.04 that's pretty much the answer right just uh do matrix algebra this is a little oh this is um in inches right they give it to us in inches so when you multiply pound over inch cubed times an inch you're gonna get stress pound over inch squared and again this is a one by four matrix this one is a four by one meaning when you multiply them you're gonna get a one by one that's all it is so let's go ahead and do the next step, right? Um, sigma, that means it's just gonna get one answer, that's it. So you're gonna have 30 times 10 to the six, I'm gonna leave that alone for now, divided by 60, and that is negative radical two over two times zero, which is zero, plus negative radical two over two times zero again, second zero now, which is plus zero, plus radical two over two times 0 0.02. Do the math, you'll get 0 0.01414. Plus, the more numbers you kind of include in here after the decimal, the better, just FYI. But I guess there's really no rule. But finally, the next one, plus, neg plus radical two over two times 0 0.04, that is 0 0.028. 
two eight. All right, uh, do the math, add all these four terms, multiply it times 30, times 10 to the six, and then divide that number by 60. You will get for your sigma, 21,213 pound per inch squared or PSI, whatever you wanna call it, doesn't really matter, but that's the answer. Again, the thing, the reason this one was so short, um, it's because I'm not going to derive this. Uh, there, then they, like I said, um, there's so many of the equations moving forward in this uh, course that these things get crazy to derive. And for me to explain to you guys in one video while I'm doing the problem, I usually like to explain what I'm doing in the problem, not like make a whole separate video. But again, these things are super complicated. But your professor is not going to expect you to derive it. He's just going to expect you to know it on the exam. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the answer.